What's up guys, Man on the Moon here with another video. Today I got the final video for my Limit Break 2 upgrades little series. Uh, I got the strong characters. Um, before I get into that, I'd like to remind you guys to like and subscribe for more content. Um, that being said, let's get to it. Alright, so first up we have Wayland, my boy. What's he gonna get? He doesn't get anything to his rush. Plus 30% damage added to his signature. I'm okay with that. I love his signature. A little bit of extra damage, I'm not mad about it. Would have been really good if it would have been an extra plus one enemy getting disarmed. That would have been legit. What's he gonna get down here? I love my job too. When performing the disarm specialist skill, heal this character by 10% of their max HP. It's gonna stack with the first one, so it's gonna be 20% heal every time he disarms. And that'll stack with like healing stun. So or if like you ki if you kill somebody with him and then disarm them and then hit get the second hit and disarm them that would actually be 40% healing off of that so i like that self more self sustain um, cuz it, it is very helpful on him i will say that so i'm happy next up we got the little lady sophia she is going to get plus one turn of stun on her rush, which it would have been better if it would have been plus one enemy. Two enemy stun for two turns. One one enemy for three turns. It's just not... It's not enough. She doesn't get anything on her signature. That needed to go down to turn two. The initial cooldown. That would have been good. Instead, she gets turn the advantage to when attacking while having a day status plus 30% attack. Okay, I mean, she's not really much of an attacker. Like, I mean, she's geared out to be. She's just not a very good one. Like, it's just not very viable, unfortunately. Next up, we got... Negan, who is going to get nothing on his rush, plus 10% infection on his signature. I like that. I don't use him as a leader, like for my, my main attack teams and war, I don't use him. I know a lot of people do, but I mainly use him on conquest for an infection team, so for him to have more infection, just that, that makes me happy. I'm really happy about that one. And then down here, a Sadistic Killer 2. Whenever an enemy dies with an infection status, this character gets 15, per 15 AP. And that's going to go up to 30 AP. So, I mean, paired with, paired with Alpha, he could be really sick, honestly, because of that. Um... Anyway, I mean, once more infection comes into the game, that could become really good. Um, at the moment, it's just kind of meth, though. Um, I don't think it's bad. I just don't think he has the pieces needed for that to be like, oh my god, that's awesome. Alright, next up we have Mercer. I'm actually kind of excited to see this one. Like, hopefully he got something good here. Plus 50% damage. So it went from 150 to... T he didn't need more damage, though. He has, he's Berserker for that. Okay. And then... Plus 25% damage, so... Yeah. Okay. I mean... That's unfortunate. If that was... That enemy gets taunt for two turns, or two enemies get taunt for one turn, that would have been really good, but... Oh well, 
I'm gonna guess he doesn't have anything down here. No, he doesn't. Alright, next up we have Dexter, who is going to get 100% conditional damage added, so it goes from deal 400% damage to one enemy and extra 300%, 700% total if that enemy is below 15% HP. So it went from 200% to 300% conditional. Um... And, I mean, like, just reading it, it's like, okay, well, that's not that good. But then he's got Waste Knot, so him getting that extra hit when you're below the 15% is actually really good. Because he's going to, that's actually really good in my opinion. For him specifically. Plus 50 dam percent damage on his signature, so it goes from 150 to 200% damage. He gets attack for three turns. Let's turn to. Oh, that's not a bad signature, honestly. And then, yeah, nothing down there. Okay. I mean, it's not bad. I just don't think he's great. Next up, we got Darius. Let's see if they can save him. Minus 10% attack down. Okay, so it goes from 30% attack down to 40% attack down. Not great. It's not great. And then 15 crit up on his signature. So, again, not great. That's kind of unfortunate. Seems like the characters that need the help the most are the ones that are just getting left, like, left completely behind. Okay, here we got Beta. He got 75% damage added to his rush, so went from 300% to 375% damage to one enemy, so not a big deal. And he got 30% damage added to his signature, so it goes from 140% damage to 170. Also, not very, I mean, it's kind of whatever. I guess that's good in the sense that when we deal with it, you know, Limit Break 2 Beta and Conquest, it still won't be all that big of a deal. So that's nice. I'm going to guess he doesn't have anything down here. Nope. Alright, next up we got Aaron. Let's... I, I'm kind of... I'm hoping he got something good because he, in my mind, has always been like right on the brink of being really good. So he gets 50% damage added to his rush, deal 500, it went from 500% to 550 to a line. So it's essentially 100% extra damage if there's two characters. But it also increases, since the damage is going up, the amount of heal that everybody's getting is also going up. So that's kind of a double whammy, and both parts of it are good. So I like that. And then 20% damage added to its signature, so it went from 150 to 170% damage to a line. So it's actually kind of like a 20% boost. And again, he heals based off of damage, so that's, that's a boost to damage and a boost to healing. So that's very good in my opinion, honestly. Like, it could have been better... I was really, I'm not going to lie, I was really hoping that, which one, support magnification, base stat boost from weapons are 15% more effective on this character, I was hoping he'd get support magnification too, but unfortunately maybe that was just a bit much asking for, I've already uh, seen that Zeke had the... The, they doubled down on the stat mods, and on LED they doubled down on the defense versus like the the trait mods. So I was hoping they would double down on the weapon stuff here. Unfortunately, they did not. But I do think he's good. I think that's good. I'm not gonna lie. All right, next up we got Connor. And he is not getting a boost to his rush. He is getting a minus one initial cooldown and 50% damage increase on his signature. 
So it's going from turn two to turn one, and from 250% to a line to 300% for a line. So it's almost like a 100% increase on top of That's actually really good. Turn one control, turn one taunt to a line for two turns. That is really good, man. That is really good. That makes him good on attack, in my opinion. Like, that makes him really good on attack. Man, I'm going to guess, since he has two upgrades right here on the signature, he's not going to have one down here. No, he doesn't. They must count those as two separate upgrades, even though it's all going to the same thing. That's unfortunate. They should count that as one upgrade, even though it's doing two things. All right, here we got Bruce Bruce. Let's see if they can help him. 10% bleed damage. So it goes from 30% of this character's attack and bleed to 40%. I mean, that's good for what you would want him to do, but he's, I mean, it's just not going to do enough. And minus one starting cooldown. All adjacent to enemy is good. I mean, I like the fact that they lowered it from three to two on the initial cooldown. I think any initial cooldown of three, turn three, is. It's just instantly useless, in my opinion. Well, maybe not useless, but it's just bad. It's bad. If it's turn three, it's bad. So for them to say, okay, here's this free-to-play character, this event character. Let's make him a little better and make him a little more usable. I like that. Um... I could see him creeping his way into somebody's attack team because of that. Not mine, but somebody's. And I'm going to guess he doesn't have anything down. No, he doesn't have anything down there. Alright, next up we got Michonne. I'm ready to see this one because she just went free to play. So, let's see what they gave her. Nothing to her rush. I mean, her rush is really good. But it's surprising that she didn't get an upgrade to her rush on either limit breaks. Minus one cooldown, plus 5% of this character's attack and bleed damage. That's really good. That's really good. She's going to be bleeding people all over the place. Is she going to get... Oh, she does. When attacking targets with bleed status, plus 30% crit damage multiplier. So that's like an execution almost. And that's going to stack with the first, so it's 60% crit damage multiplier. That is nuts, yo. That is really good. If you have... If you're gonna have limit double like limit break to Michonne, go with like upgrade that. That's gonna be really those two, that target weakness one and two, that is really good. So yeah, I'm happy she got good upgrades. She got some real good ones. Alright, here we got Morgan. Let's see where he got OP at. Nothing added to his Rush plus three turns of elusive. That's just silly. So he has elusive for six turns now. That is ridiculous. Like that's not even good. Like I mean, it's it's cool that it you know okay he's just gonna have it forever, but like okay okay. That's silly. Uh, what's he going to get down here? Eccentricity. So 20% normalized resistance. So that goes up to 60%. Now that is kind of... 
That is nuts, because that's some you can't mod against normal eyes. So for him to have, I've always said sixty percent is better than your average gold mod on as far as uh, resist goes. So that's kind of crazy. He has built in like a built in good resist. That's man. Next up, we have Harper. Um, let's see, what's she gonna get? Nothing on her rush. Minus one cooldown on her signature, so. One enemy. Yeah. I mean, that's not bad. Um. I mean, it's not great, but that's that's actually pretty... I mean, that's decent. That's pretty supporty, honestly. Like, that's very supporty. Especially for a control character. Down here. Falling petals 2 when this character starts their turn. 15% chance to remove all positive effects from an enemy. So that's gonna stack with the first one to be 55% chance. That's nuts. I mean, I, I don't necessarily think that... I mean, that's not nuts. That's good, though. That is good, though. Alright, and lastly, we have Michonne 2000. And, oh my lord, what's she gonna get? 50% damage per attack. So it goes from 200% damage per hit to 250 so it goes from 800% total to 1,000% total. And the fact that she has Rampage, that's just... Man. Priya who? Princess who? Man. What's she gonna get done? Nothing on her SIG. Plus 15 crit. So it goes up to 55 crit on the sharpen 1 and 2, which normally I'd be like, ah, oh, it's not that good, but oh my god, that is so good. Like, she is so good, and it, I mean, guard, oh my, this is just disgusting. That's nasty. That is just disgusting. All right, guys, well... That was all the upgrades for strong characters in the upcoming Limit Break 2 update. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Who got the best? Who got the worst? Um, personally, I mean, obviously Michonne 2000. Let's be real. She got the best upgrades, point blank, period. Out of all of them. Um... But I mean, regular Michonne got some good ones. Connor, Connor's is really good. I think Aaron's were decent. Um, I liked Negan's. I liked Wayland's. So I think there were quite a few good ones out of strong. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. That's all I got for you guys today, though. So remember, it is a game. So try and have fun, guys. This is going to be your friendly neighborhood man on the moon, signing off. Later.